from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Ivan Johnson, the founder of the Punch Tabloid, died in hospital yesterday at the age of 68 after suffering a heart attack. Mr. Johnson was rushed to doctor's hospital after that heart attack yesterday morning, where he was put on live support, but he died yesterday evening. In a Facebook post last night, the Punch said, quote, rest in peace, Ivan Nicholas Johnson. Mr. Johnson was a force in Bahamian media for decades, and the Bahamas Press Club honored him for his contributions in 2008 with the Pioneer Award for his newspaper publication. The chairperson of the National Vaccine Consultative Committee says the Bahamas faces rapidly dwindling COVID-19 vaccine supplies due to increased demand. However, hesitancy remains among a portion of the population about receiving the jab, despite more than 100,000 people reaching full inoculation. On Sunday, health officials announced that the country reached a new vaccination milestone with 104,380 people now fully vaccinated. However, in an interview with the Tribune yesterday, Dr. Mersaline Dal Regis, said while this was exciting news, it did not mean that vaccine hesitancy was a thing of the past. She said there was rapid consumption of doses, but currently no confirmed date for when new supplies from the U.S. government or the COVAX facility will arrive. The decision to send Corrections Commissioner Charles Murphy on administrative leave is foul and inappropriate and proves something is amiss, according to Mr. Murphy's lawyer, Ramona Farkasen Seymour, who yesterday urged Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis to intervene or publicly address the matter. Mrs. Farkasen Seymour defended Commissioner Murphy's handling of Prescott Smith, the matter that sparked his removal and highlighted National Security Minister Wayne Monroe's role in a 2019 lawsuit that sought to quash Mr. Murphy's appointment as Commissioner. Commissioner. She said that matter is evidence of Mr. Munro's bias and questioned whether Mr. Davis was aware of Mr. Munro's role in the case. Mr. Munro has said that sending the commissioner on administrative leave was driven by the prison's handling of Prescott Smith, a prominent Andrews Progressive Liberal Party supporter who Mr. Munro said was being kept in prison in a breach of Justice Lauren Klein's Supreme Court order. Mr. Smith reportedly tested positive for COVID-19 in prison and was quarantined in a cell with three other people. Mr. Farkasen C. Moore, however, said there is more to the story than what has been publicly revealed. Royal Bahamas Defense Force Commodore Raymond King said yesterday that about 429 Haitian migrants are still being detained in Inagua following a repatriation exercises held over the weekend. He said those individuals are expected to be returned to their home country very soon. His comments come after more than 400 migrants were repatriated to Haiti on Friday. It was previously announced that repatriation exercises on the island would continue throughout the weekend. However, when asked for an update into the matter, Commodore King said he was informed that the remaining migrants were still being detained on that island. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, transparency advocates are calling on Britain to tighten the country's defenses against money laundering and tax avoidance after a massive leak of financial data showed how London is a key destination of choice for some of the world's richest and most powerful people to conceal their cash. The cash of almost 12 million files shows how wealthy people around the world reportedly set up offshore companies to buy property and avoid taxes. Foreign individuals identified as beneficiaries of these types of offshore accounts in London include Jordanian King Abdullah II and associates of Pakistani's Prime Minister Imran Khan. Johnson & Johnson asked the Food and Drug Administration today to allow extra shots of its COVID-19 vaccine as the U.S. government moves toward expanding its booster campaign to millions more vaccinated Americans. J&J said it filed a request with the FDA to authorize boosters for people 18 and older who previously received the company's one-shot vaccine, while the company said it submitted data on several different booster intervals ranging from two to six months and it did not formally recommend one to regulators. The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Persistent troughing coupled with streaming tropical moisture will continue to support pockets of unsettled weather, mainly across the central and southeast Bahamas today. Boaters in the central and southeast Bahamas should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity, while beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the high risk of rip currents at east coast beaches. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny and hot, 
with a few isolated showers and the chance of a thunderstorm this afternoon. Variable cloudiness and warmth with a few scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms tonight. Boaters can expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly cloudy and hot with scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms this afternoon through tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect. Boaters can expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times this afternoon, building up to 15 to 20 knots by evening in the central Bahamas. East to southeast at 15 knots, but gusty at times over open waters. Seas 2 to 4 feet, building up to 4 to 6 feet by evening in the central Bahamas, 4 to 7 feet but higher in gusts over the ocean in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 90 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set this afternoon at 650 and will rise tomorrow morning at 704. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.